Okay. Hi guys. How are you? Um, I see Betty and Annette and Betty and Annette. Okay. Well, hopefully you guys are having a great early part of your day. Mary R. Hello. How are you? Um, I am sure that Debbie showed you guys this, but I'm going to show you guys again because um, I just bought mine and I'm having a blast with it. So if you did not see this, um, we have the Go Press the Go Press and Foil, because I can never say it quite right. And Debbie just looks at me like I'm crazy. You know, the Go Press Foil. <laughs> so it's um, the Go Press and Foil. And um, it ha comes with a package of 16 uh, rolls. They're full-size rolls, which you would normally get. And then there's a whole set on the other side too. And if you see that number right there, you can type that number in, um, in the store, uh, in order to be able to take a look at it. Um, it, it is an investment, but I'm telling you right now, when you pay sometimes anywhere between five and seven, eight dollars, because the special ones like this one are more expensive. And there are several special ones in this group. If you can see, we've got ombres and glitters and holographics. And um, there's even kind of almost a matte gold in here, which I really like too. In fact, I might take that out for my last hurrah today. Um, so it's got several different kinds of silver, several different kinds of golds. So you can see what the differences are between them. And this is not their norm. This is not their normal gold either. Yet. So they're all different types. And, um, and I saw it when I was going through the things and I didn't realize that, uh, those things meant that I would be buying something. <laughs> Okay, so Debbie's chair, bear with me guys, Debbie's chair is sitting on this glass mat. And if I move forward at all, um, it's gonna fall off the, gla <laughs> the glass. So uh, this is the second time that I think we're teaching class with me sitting here. So hopefully it'll be okay. If not, Bryce will holler at me that I'm just out of shot. So I'm gonna start kind of with the very beginning ideas of using toner, because that's what today is. It's about toner, um, toner type foiling. And toner type foiling for me feels very, um, I can do almost anything with it and be really specific. Um, I like that about this. Uh, it is, it happens to be my favorite and I haven't learned the press and go. I have all the items for it, as you can see, now I have a whole bunch of foil, um, but I haven't actually done any of that yet. Uh, just uh, time has not allotted. And prior to even meeting Debbie, um, I was given by my mother with great kindness, um, a very large package of all different types of um, things that will work with a mink toner machine. But I will tell you, but this one is the mink. It has a little slot right here. Um, we do not sell them typically in the store due to weight. Uh, but I think that um, you may actually have something that will already work at home, something that I didn't have at the time. And that is a laminator. So a mink is just a form of a laminator. Um, it does allow you to choose different heat levels. So then that way you're getting the right amount on your piece and it will flash if it's too hot. So it lets you know it's not okay. But if I go to three is even blinking. If I go to four, it's going to stay steady because that's where I was heating up things. And five, it has to heat up more. So because of what we're doing right now, I'm going to stay at four. I'm going to try and stay at four for the whole thing. But I have noticed that when I put in thinner paper, it tends to take, um, it tends to not completely give me a full foil. So hopefully that will 
that will work. And guys, I have tried because there are so many different things. I'm trying to make this quick, quick, quick because there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think I have six different things that I am making today. So we are going to try and run through this as quickly as I can. However, I do want to note that um, if you aren't sure what, um, what I mean by something, please don't, please don't just let it pass by. Ask me the question. I'll be more than happy to slow down and, and do that. So, um, anyways, okie dokie. So I'm going to start with the idea of toner foiling with just plain paper. Now, um, uh, we're actually talking about setting some of these up for you on cardstock so that you can be able to print them out, excuse me, so that we can mail them to you. Um, this is just kind of like a mixture of things so that I can show you what they look like. Uh, because of um, because of the way that uh, toner works, you have to have a toner machine. So using this out of your regular copy machine does not work. But I will tell you that if you have something that you want to say that you already have a picture of that isn't copyrighted, um, which none of these are, this is something that we that I have access to based on our my commercial costs that I pay for these. Um, so I these are for businesses and um, you can go on, find something that isn't copyrighted. I just want to throw that out there again um, because then you can go ahead and print it up on your copy on your printer run it down to Staples or FedEx or UPS has copy machines. Any of those big copy machines are toner based. So you should be able to go right in. And I haven't used Staples before. So I ran in. Hi, Roberta. How are you? Um, I, I ran in really quickly with my papers this morning after I printed them out last night. And I asked them to please run these through their thicker toner machine. Um, you have to pay a little bit more. I bring in my own card stock and they print it because their machines can handle it. If you use the self copy machine, um, you may, depending on the company, not be able to put in card stock. Um, but uh, Staples and FedEx. And I believe UPS, I think that this is the first time I've done staples, but UPS and FedEx, I've taken my card stock in and they've put it in the machine to self copy. So I get a little bit cheaper that way. But really, in reality, um, I printed out 10 pages and it cost me $2. So $2 is pretty amazing. Um, and so we're going to we're going to actually just see if this works. So I'm going to show you a few of them. This is an abstract. One of the things when you print out um, the pictures, you'll want to make sure that you are just in black and white. So just choose black and white. Do not choose color and do not choose grayscale. Because if you do, it will put all of those things in and then it will fill your space with the same foil because this reacts to everything that's black. It's non-reactive to anything that's white. So... Um, I'm just going to take some of these fun papers that we've had left over from a few things. And you can see right through that hole there, there's something missing, but that's okay because I'm just here to show you what these things do. And I don't want to waste too much of the paper because then I can't use it somewhere else. So scissors. I did not see if I had scissors nearby. I made sure I had a glue bottle and foil and the heater, <laughs> so you name it. Um, you can use as much or as little as you want. Um, personally, since I probably don't make anything bigger than a five by seven or a six by six with foiling, um, and I don't typically do um, A6s or A2s, they're a little small. Uh, you couldn't find anything that would fit. Can you buy a toner copier? Uh, sorry, I can only see half of the words over there. Can you buy a toner cartridges that will go into your printer? 
No, you have to have a toner machine. Um, so that's going to be a non inkjet machine. If you have a laser printer, they should have toner in them. And the key to toner is, is that it has to be put on with heat. So um, it solidifies this. And that's why your papers, when you take them into a copy machine place, um, your papers are nice and warm when they come out. Uh, if you're using an inkjet, you'll notice that uh, when your paper comes out after you print, there's no heat there. And the reason is that the heat sets in the toner. Um, there's another thing about this too. When you use it, you can only use it once. So when I put this on here, it'll be really cool. But to tack on back here at the bottom, I'm not going to do it right now. But you can't take this piece and put toner over the top of it and try using it again because you have set that toner into a higher heat level and it is set for good. Um, you can rub, you can scrub. I've tried erasing a foil. It does not come off. Um, so when you set it down, if you want to save this piece, you know that you're going to use it, then cut it off and save it for a different time. But just for uh, conversation sake and for Boop, 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 boop. Sorry, guys, I uh, forgot one of the important things to do with your paper. Ha! Okay, still got it in there. We're good. Hey, look, we're going to get rid of that piece right there. Um, you need to have a carrier of some sort. I thought that I brought them back here. Bryce, um, there should be some uh, plastic covers. I apologize, guys. I thought that I had grabbed them. There may be some parchment. Yeah, and there should be some parchment paper over there, too. Might not be. No, sorry, that's not it. Uh, you'll see it with a gray, with a green um, silicone hot pad, unless I have it over here and I just don't realize it. See, I was all excited about having it having it down pat today, and no siree. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Were there any other ones besides this one? Yeah, more plastics, if we can. Okay, perfect. Okay, these are carrier perfect. That's exactly what I needed. These are um, these are what you hold your papers and your foil in when you run it through the machine. So I tried the look left. It didn't work. It was it was nowhere to be found. <laughs> um, if you get your foil on backwards, or if you get a foil that doesn't belong in a toner machine, this is what you end up with. And it can lay that toner back down onto your paper. So um, I just wanted to show this as my mistakes. So here we go. You have to use regular toner paper, uh, regular toner foils. And Midas Touch worked for me. Um, uh, the any of the mink uh, foils will work. Um, and those were the two that we found worked along with um, along with Debbie's old ones that she's had since the dawn of time. Um, so those all worked, but these come off and they don't make a very good print. In fact, if we want to, I can show you what that looks like, but only if you want to see it. It's a very faint little bit of silver. You can see it here. Um, it, the silver part that's on there, yeah, the foil stuck to everywhere on the paper. You couldn't see the picture underneath, so it did not do the trick at all. Some people like a heating bath um, because they feel like it's too hot when they pull it out. It really is not any warmer than something that you might pull out of the microwave um, unless that's too hot. So I do want to give you that warning. And it is, it, it is heat. However, it's encapsulated. The heat's all inside. So the most that you're going to touch is, um, is this pack. So you take and you put your plastic has a top to it 
right there. You put that down, then your paper down, then your foil down. And it takes a little bit to run things through. So I did all pre-cutting on everything but these little papers. But I am going to show you some of the ones that I did while this runs through. So the abstract is here. You can print down words um, anytime you want. Uh, I am cutting because it doesn't really matter so that I can show you. But you can print these on regular copy paper. Your copy paper tends to bend just a tiny little bit and you may have a little bit of a ripple through it. So I like to use cardstock to print it on. Um, but if you want it to be on your little insert paper, you absolutely can do it. It just isn't it just will have a slight ripple. Um, so just be aware of that. Uh, this says, Dear Life, when I said, can my day get any worse? It was rhetorical, not a challenge. And <laughs> I have to laugh because uh, Sunday uh, we were having an inspection of our home um, in order to sell it. Some people have offered to buy it. We're so excited. And my parents and I found a place with two houses on it. Um, uh, that will allow a hardship, uh, a hardship, uh, a permit. It allows you to, if you have someone that has, um, that has a form of a hardship or you need, they need some extra help. You can do that out in the country. Um, and so we found a house and it really was if I tell you the whole story, we'll be here a really long time, but it has been amazing. And so I was cleaning out my jetted tub. I was doing really great. I was taking care of anything. Can you see that, guys? So it looks like this. Look like this. And when I pull it off, it just leaves where the black is. See? And I will tell you that if you paint the other side with a reactive heat paint or you put toner down here, um, you can reuse the negative. So if you want this again the opposite way, you can totally use the negative. And I'm actually going to show you how to do that um, in this process. So um, isn't that so pretty? It just looks like a paint splotch. Uh, mercury paper. You can also add this to a colored paper if you want to take down colored cardstock and ask them to use it um, at UPS or FedEx. You can absolutely do that. Um, anyways, I, I took the jet and uh, I was cleaning up the jets to the tub and 20 minutes letting it run. Haven't used it in a while. Um, it always seemed like it wasn't the easiest uh, time to do it. Um, so stuff was happening, kids, uh, people sleeping, people, <laughs> people wanting something, uh, packing, uh, working on the house, all those things kind of got in the way of me using my tub. Um, and so, uh, I hadn't used it. And I went through and I used my heavy duty cleaners, let it run. And I turned it off and emptied it because then you have to fill it back up and run it again for another 10 minutes to clean out the detergent. And uh, sure enough, I, as I'm turning it off, I hear a drip, 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 drip. And there's nothing. I can't find anything. I'm not coming up with anything. And I'm like, where is this coming from? I went downstairs into my craft area and here's my foil, my paper's right behind. Um, and I'm going to show you what I mean by this toner piece. It's run through there a few times, so it may now be heat set, but it will probably attach to my paper if it's against that space. Um, so I went downstairs and there is a stream coming out of a little hole. It found its way through a hole in my ceiling um, that got bigger with every second. Um, and we ended up with a seven foot by seven foot hole that I had to dig out at, oh, 9 p.m. till about midnight um, uh, on 
Saturday evening. And um, then I stayed up and I had to pack up about half of my craft room because we were going to need that much space in order to have my roofing guy come in. And I'm going to say that he is a huge, 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 wonderful, just a talented guy already. And he did not have to come out and do what he did. But too thick of a carrier. I need to run it through one more time. Um, and sometimes you will find that you can see on it. You should be able to see the indents from the foil um, attaching. And if you don't, then that probably means that it's needing to run through again. So, um, so with that, uh, yeah, it was so much fun. I, I, yeah. So I was going to show you my craft room. Um, we were going to tape it and send it your direction. Um, and now I can't <laughs> because it is, it is pretty packed up, packed up, um, which is needed to anyways, because we have to move in literally two weeks. Um, so I, I, this is how I felt that night. And so when I came across the saying, I thought, wow, this is the wrong kind of foil. So this foil didn't even print. So I'm going to move that completely out of the way because then that means that I've probably had the wrong thing in my hand. Let's use some of this colorful. Um, so it all was fixed. Thank, thank you, Wayne, so much. Um, I know... You guys don't know him, but let me tell you, he has come through for us on so many occasions and uh, all because my husband said that he wouldn't allow me to paint the house on scaffolding on the two-sided section. So uh, I wasn't allowed to do that. So, <laughs> so uh, that is how we met Wayne. And um, he has painted the outside of my house. He's fixed a hole in my drywall. He, um, he found a guy to help, um, help build a deck and put flashing on the back and changed out the siding when we found that there was some damage with the siding. Uh, he's gone up and put beams in the roof. So he used to be a roofer and now he does drywall and painting because that's, he says he's old enough that that's just what he wants to do. Some of these will run right through. Others are a little bit thicker. I have found that parchment paper works, not wax paper. Parchment paper works as your carrier because it doesn't stick to anything. If you do the wax paper, it could stick along the way. Um, so, because the heat, think about it. Uh, is when you aren't using adhesive for your napkins, you can always adhere your napkins to your card with plastic wrap and, and iron and, and wax paper. So that is the reason why. So, uh, bless his heart, he finished it this morning, and he came in first thing at 7.30 Sunday morning and got it taped and textured before the inspection guy came at 3 o'clock. I was sure that either that or the, hmm, this didn't work. Uh, it's on the correct thing. It barely, you can barely see it on here. So my lettering didn't work. It wasn't solidified enough, I guess. Um, hmm. That's very interesting. Well, on to a different one. Uh, so we, we went through and he's come back each day and sanded it down and put on another layer. And he really has been amazing. So thank you, Wayne. And um, I am, one of my papers here says, so I'm so very thankful. And I was thinking about that today, how we're supposed to be where we're supposed to be because somebody could have freaked out and they saw that hole and said, never mind, I don't want this house. Um, the bank could have said, nope. Um, but the guy was a contractor. We didn't know it, but the guy buying our house was a contractor. So here's my paper. We're going to see if these lines will work. Um, hopefully they will. If they don't, then I'll try cutting it one more time and using my mink foil and see if maybe 
it's just not working with this foil. Um, so we were we were very fortunate in the bank. He has a professional relationship with the bank that's giving him his loan. Um, and so that means that, thank goodness, um, uh, it didn't scare either one of them away because the guy knew that the contractor could do any work if there were other things that came up, which there shouldn't be. Nothing had happened for seven years. I installed that tub and had everything done seven years ago. So. Yep, it absolutely is. I'm very sorry that uh, you're not feeling good. Uh, that sounds like it was Mary R. that was not feeling good. Oh. Thelma is not feeling good. Okay, I am going to make a projection. This is the wrong kind of foil. So only some of Debbie's foil works. Now that I've run it through the toner, though, I can't put it back through. So it barely came off the back. It's so it's barely there. You can probably see it on this a little bit better, but I'm going to try again and I'm just going to grab some of that type of foiling. Um So anyways, that went through smooth sailing. We've had to move in three weeks from the time that they offered on the house instead of the typical month. And so my husband fortunately had vacation time coming. And so he has been working really hard when I'm here. And otherwise, the two of us have been working really hard. We had most of our stuff packed. But, you know, there's still all that stuff to wrap up. Like I went home last night and there's nothing in my kitchen, which means that today's Emma's birthday. And um, we, and thank you everyone that has sent her cards. We have not opened a single one because we knew that with school, there wouldn't be much of an ability to have a birthday. So instead we're gonna go through all the cards this evening and have a couple of cupcakes and sing her happy birthday. And then um, we're working on a very small birthday party at my parents' house because uh, we won't be having much of one <laughs> by next week. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're just busy beavers around our house. Anyways, I have lots of different abstracts. Um, I had run one through yesterday and I'm not seeing it. It looked like an oil slick. It was really cool. Um, hmm. I wonder where that is. Um, Cause this does take time to, to heat these up and run them through. So as I'm moving through a card, I'm going to pretty much do that each and every time. Okay, we'll know with this whether it was the, the foil or if it is the toner from Staples. So let's find out. It was the foil. See how much darker that is now? So this is gold, which means that you can watercolor this with paint brushes. You can uh, use your watercolor pencils in there. See, there's all the gold. Um, it won't, it will help keep you inside your line. You can't saturate it, but um, you truly can color with these right in place. Um, so that's the reason why I use this as an example, because that just looks like so much fun, doesn't it? And then you've got this pretty little gold foil with your fall. Um, So yay, uh, with the adhesive, with the adhesives, we were able to use these types of things and then turn right around and use them again in places. But these really will have a very clear, um, clear hole through them. And I think I will just run this on my negative just to kind of show you what will happen when you put that. Now the foil can go back through and it's fine. It should adhere without a problem. It has to do with the toner heating up 
And so once it's been heated up, you can't use it the secondary time. And you ask, how do we make that happen so that we can do it? I will show you. So now, knowing that that was wrong, I could put my, just because I asked if my day got any worse, that doesn't mean send me a challenge, um, a paper. But you know what? I, I met to the challenge and called Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> phone friend. <laughs> and he is so sweet because he goes, I wouldn't do this for anybody. <laughs> he said, he goes, but you guys have kind not business customers, but you guys have become friends. <laughs> so I thought that that was so very sweet. I'm trying to keep these smaller so that they go a little bit faster through here. Okay. So this was my abstract right here put my foil on it, my negative foil that already has flowers and things taken out. And so now I'm going to run it through here and look what it's done. Can you see that? I'm going to put it in really close. It actually has left imprints of the foil picture behind on the toner and the toner is not sticky. So it can totally stay that way. So if you want something to go in on your black as a negative, um, but that you want all the foil to it, you can actually use a toner sheet and place this on your negative um, and uh, place your negative on it and you will have a black finished um, version of the one that I just showed you and set aside. So that's, that is what it does. And if you look here now, you can see that there's a lot less left. So that is probably the best way to use your foil is to use it as a negative. And I'm in the wrong space. There we go. Use your extra foil as a negative. And I'll do it a few times today. So, oh, here's my other one. So here and here. Ha <laughs> ha, here. So it really does change, change the look. Um, I think that the acorns are probably the best example because it's in the middle of a bigger foil piece. You can really see how that sticks out. Uh, you will not be coloring off of this though. So it will just be a black and whatever foil type you decide to put with it for a negative. Okay. I am going to set all of these aside so that if you guys have a question, I can come back to it. Um, I think I am going to go with, instead of this one, my So Very Thankful, and you cannot see it because it's a big piece of paper. There we go. It's just an eight and a half by 11. Um, it says So Very Thankful. And normally I would put... Uh, this in uh, form of gold or silver, whichever you prefer. And then I would take and I would cut out a section for the green and here and here. And then the bottom section I would use in orange, or I can run the whole thing through gold. Um, the mink will not do something this big, um, but your laminator machine will. Um, most laminator machines take a eight and a half by 11. Some even do a 12 by 12, like um, your story. Mm, I'm probably saying the wrong term. I think it's your storybook. Um, it might just be your story. We have um, connectors and binders and things for them. They're really a great thing to have. And one of the things that you need is a laminator. So I can tell you for a fact that eight and a half by 11 will go through that. Um, and if you want to make a banner, so long as it's within the size that you have, so this one looks to be about six inches wide. I can make a banner as long as I want to, and it can all be gold. It can all be foiled. It can all be whatever you want it to be. So I can put on a strip of paper that's printed really long and um, put it on some foam board after I run it through the, run it through the, um, and take it by section and use it for papers on it and then put the foam board after I've run this through. So 
um, it will take as long as you want and keep it all as one solid piece. So it's really neat to have. I will not be using this one as an example. Um, I think that I want to use this one as my example. Oh, I've got, I, I have a fall on the brain. It started to rain yesterday. So yeah, it's there. Um, pumpkin spice and everything nice. So wouldn't that make just a cute little six by six frame if you put a little bit of orange foil here, put a little bit of gold or maybe even a rose gold. Your and can be in green or in orange and then everything nice and then this one in in pumpkin. I mean in in uh, purple. <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, I'm tired. <laughs> Every This one could be orange. This one could be orange. You could use the rose gold on the words and then maybe like a little green in the middle because it would be fun. You don't have to go to that much work. You can use them all as one fell swoop picture. Um, uh, but it is fun to do those and I'm, and I'm going to go through and do some of those for you. Um, I've got Merry Christmas. So these just give you some examples of what you can do. Want background paper? This says bonjour on it, and you can totally run it through. Um, I'm going to take a little tiny bit. And now that I'm not sure which one is which foil out of these other ones, I believe that this one is. So here's hoping. And if it doesn't work, then we'll cut off another sheet and try something else. I promise, guys, for everything else, I have the right sheets hanging out. Okay, so I'm putting in my carrier piece. And um, I haven't had the toner come off on my paper yet on the other side. The second time of sending it through, though, I did have a little bit of a mess on the back side of my paper. But most of the time, if you're making cards um, or it's going in a frame, nobody's ever going to see it, right? Where do you get the carrier pieces? Um, uh, these are uh, sold with... Um, the mink sells some of their items. Heidi Squawk, I think is how she, Squawk. Um, she, uh, she has little things that are created with toner already on them. And she gives you a section of foils. Um, this is how I know that this is part of my mink section because they come in squares instead. Um, and you do get a lot less foil, by the way, than you would with the Midas Touch. Um, and so I would be using those if I didn't already have these. Um, uh, the, so these carriers usually come with one of those types of um, uh, pieces. You can use a heat resistant acetate, but that parchment paper really did work so nicely for me yesterday. And honestly, I'm not going to buy, unless they come with something, I'm probably not going to buy them again because they, they kind of have now some bend to them. And the more bendy that they get, the more likely that they're going to ripple your, your item. Guess what? This was the right kind of paper. Look at that. So this is, um, Warren can steal this from me, I guess, if she wants. Um, this is what it looked like first. And this is what you end up with with the paper. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So these are just some examples of what you can do. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to apply these in different ways. So, cause this is just, this is just toner and paper. So can you imagine, can you imagine what we can do with a whole bunch of other goodies? <laughs> Let me show you. Okay. So first off, I think I'm going to go with this. Since we've been talking toners, I think this is a good way to go. So uh, these came with uh, my mink. It comes as black. 
It's a heavier coated piece. Um, I have saved these for a while. Um, and I don't even know if you can get them anymore, but I wanted to show you how these look. So like the Heidi ones that are made, um, uh, Anna Griffin actually was the person who I had seen with one of these. Um, and I haven't seen any of her items for sale again. So I don't know once it's gone, they're gone, I think. So, but there are lots of ways that you can make these for yourself. So, but I want to show you how some of the other items work. So we have not in stock currently, but we have had uh, toner pins in the past. And um, the toner pin uh, comes through. It just looks like a standard, just a standard piece of pin. It almost looks like a Sharpie. Um, this one, I think, American Crafts, it's made by Mink, uh, and I think the, the cartridge had said Heidi on it, so I'm sure that that's the case. So here I've got a wonderful little place card. So I'm preparing for my Thanksgiving, so I am putting my parents' names on it. It's going to be about that wide. I can't do it any other way. It doesn't get any thinner than this. So you want to know that if you are going to use the toner pen, um, it's not as delicate. It is thicker because the toner's thicker. So um, just kind of to beware. Now, <clears throat> the back side, I didn't realize at first, and that's one of my messes that was on this, this one that I showed you. That's some of my toner that uh, that <laughs> ended up on the back. And I was really amazed that I was able to run it through a secondary time and get it off, get it on the back. Um, I don't know why it let me do it because normally it won't. So maybe it's because it gives you the opportunity to see what I did wrong and, <laughs> and turn around and be able to do it again. Um, If you have any scratches, so I'm going to point out here, I've got scratches on these. If you have any scratches, um, it will show up. So if you don't want to have anything that scratches, if it's gonna be like a solid piece of um, gold, there's one, like it will be on the back. Um, there is one, uh, there's one section that has a lot less scratches. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. So put it in like this. I wanna leave it flat. I don't really want to end up having it um, possibly not work on the one side because I am not sure how this machine works on the inside. I just know the instructions say to put the foil face up. <laughs> so um, uh, I try and make sure that I do that. One of the things that I do find is, is that it will slip uh, as you're closing it. But once it's closed and you've got it set, it does not move unless you've put your piece in crooked, uh, like your carrier piece in crooked. Um, But otherwise, I let it do its thing. I go and take it as slow as it needs to go. It only goes in at one speed. Um, so just be okay with the fact that there are times that you will need it. Okay, so I'm going to do two different stencil types because I wanted to show you what the differences are. Um, this lovely piece of rose came with uh, I can't remember if it was with the gel press or if it came with the Jamie Sparkles, but this is the, the rose one. And um, so a lot of you have it, and I thought, well, this makes it fun for you guys to be able to do. So I went through and I put my, I put my uh, 
rows right on here. I made it fit the way that I wanted it to. And now what I'm going to do is, is that I'm actually just going to take and put in a, an extra rows over here so you can see what I did, not necessarily have to have to see everything all over again, because let me tell you, it it's not it it's a lot of fun and I love how it turned out. Um, but it does take a little bit of time. So I went through and I put an outside around. And this is just a regular five by seven card. There's nothing special about it, nothing that can get ruined. Um, unless you use an eraser that has a little dirty mark on it. <laughs> um, uh, it truly is something that um, you can not have to be too gentle with. Um, so I like this idea of this backward stencil piece. Uh, normally, this would be something that would be left um, painted. Um, And so what we are doing with our pen and our toner is filling in that paint job. Um, but uh, you want to go in and around the inside part and then back around the outside part. So you want it to join. So same thing here, you want it to join. So here's my pencil. I see my very big picky spot. And I believe that I didn't have a problem with anything last night. Of course not, because I'm not shaking when I'm doing it by myself. <laughs> um, okay, so what I've done is, is that even though some of these areas um, aren't exactly perfect, um, like this had a little bump that came out when I was shaking, I just take my toner pen and work my way around. And if I don't like it there, that's okay. It won't have toner on it. And nine times out of 10, look, that little bump totally just disappeared. Now, something with the stencil that you'll have to remember is what the stencil is actually going to look like. What's your goal at the end? Because if I had done all the leaves um, in a way that uh, I would have filled them in, then those would have been all gold too, which you can totally do. But if you want to color this or paint this, um, you can. Uh, you can use your Jamie Sparkles and um, and put it through with a stencil and then cover those spaces and it will look beautiful by the time you put the gold on top. Because remember, it's reacting to the toner. It's not reacting to what's already there. So you have to have something that is a component of toner in order for it to work that way. Okay, this is a perfect opportunity to show you guys, hey, I am out of, my ink is starting to dry because I didn't wet it back down last, since last night. So I've got my little piece here. Here's my toner ink, um, that's actual toner ink that I'm just using one of my crafting uh, covers and it'll probably just end up being a toner sheet. <laughs> you just push down like you would with a paint pen. It's exactly how it works. And I like the idea that when I am done filling in these spaces, that the foil really does help make a barrier for your, um, for your uh, coloring. 
So it helps keep you in the line so that you don't have a mistake. Um, I like that a lot. <laughs> I think that I'm just going to use gold because I think it will show up the best. Um, like I said, this gives you a lot of different opportunities um, to do. Here's the problem with, um, it's going to be to my right, guys, because I'm left-handed, so it's going to be fun keeping track of all my carriers. I'm going to have to be very specific where I set them down at, I think. So I did set aside and put parchment paper with this for the four for the five by seven just to make sure that I didn't somehow sticky up my board. Um, but I don't see it handy quickly. So we're gonna just do this the best as we can. Mm. Nope, I'm going to cut it off because I don't want to end up. I will show you what happens when you don't listen to your machine. <laughs> um, your toner dries. So when it dries from your pin, um, it is totally dry before you ever set it in. So it won't smear while you're doing all these things. Um, the worst thing that can happen is that you cut your carrier, uh, but uh, the worst thing that can truly happen is that it will, <clears throat> it will make you use a certain size. Um, when you have a carrier, use your folded edge always to tuck it in, and part of the reason for that It's not liking that thick of a card. Well, let me take the second half of that card out. So this is a learning experience, guys. Um, I hadn't put anything in other than a single sheet. So this is going to mean that if you want a five by seven, you're going to have to use your eight by eight pads if you want to paint or make pictures or any of that um, type of thing. And you're going to have to put that to a five by seven card, probably because the fold is too thick because I have put two papers through before, um, but not this. So. Let's try this again. Any questions, guys? Have I uh, made enough mistakes to where you're learning well? <laughs> they're talking about the different things their dogs have eaten. What? <laughs> yeah, Debbie's dog before we got married at the, ate the lead weights out of the vertical lines. When she took her in and they did the x-rays, there's just holes all over the dog. Oh, no. And she had to be fed oatmeal to help her pass the lead weights. Oatmeal so, mixed with tuna fish. So it would be, yes, doesn't that sound just... Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> yes. I 
the only way we can have an unleaded dog again. Oh, how funny. Um, so I run the toner. My toner pin is several years old. I hadn't, it worked for me with Dwayne and Glenda. Um, so I'm not sure what I did wrong. I'm running it through one extra time because it looks like it just didn't stick. Um, and I'm running it on a little bit of a higher heat. So hopefully that will help. When you're doing some of these, it's just one time try and sometimes you have to try more than once. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it didn't work unless, no, I have the right kind of paper and right kind of foil. At least I think I do. Hmm. Works everywhere but where you put your canoe pen. Um, it's, it's shown up, but it's pretty light and you would not normally see that heavy of a black. Um, and so if you were to color it, um, I, it may be that I just didn't do it at a high enough heat the first time through. So I tried running it a second time and it didn't work. So let's see what happens if I try this in order just to make sure that I don't have the wrong type of foil. Can you grab out of the, um, green box in there? Can you just grab me a few handfuls. I'm just going to re-go over some of these lines just to check because I really have not had this problem before. If you lift up the, the top tray, it should be all on the right in front of you at the table. Foil. Yes. Thank you very much. Foil. Awesome. I was just about to say, they should be easy to find because I just went through them all. Okay. So I've done just this little section. Let's see if it was a foil issue. Hey, green. It's here. Let's do it. Hi, Adeline. Hi, Adeline. And I will tell you that my biggest mistake constantly is accidentally getting these things caught with the little stickum. So I try to remember to fold it down. This is going to be a good trick for the Midas Touch ones because it does the same thing. You go to pull it out and lo and behold, it gives you a hard time. Okay, since I know that I'm just doing my pin mark here and not everywhere, I'm just going to go ahead and cut for just that section because it's not going to make a difference anywhere else. And because I've restarted uh, it with this toner, it should work. And this is the correct amount of foiling. I mean, the correct type of foiling, I should say. And sometimes I just don't know. And that's just the truth. I just don't know why it happens. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about stencils the opposite direction. And since I tore my lovely piece of paper, perfect opportunity. There are two different, three different ways that you can go about in doing this. And I'm going to show you each way. So then that way we can just run it through all at once and see what looks more feasible to you that you would like. So this is the toner pin. So I'm gonna put my pin right through here. And I'm just following the stencil. So I don't even have to think twice about this one and how I want to run it. That other one was kind of, uh, it was getting fancy. Okay. 
This cardstock is really soaking up the toner. Um, so you can use this with any stencil. It will wash off with uh, soap and water. Baby wipes are also good. Um, and uh, the reason why I say that <laughs> is because I thought when I was first doing these things, oh, am I going to ruin everything with these toner pens? And the answer is you shouldn't. Um, there are spaces like in some of my applicators that once it had the opportunity to dry, it got stuck. So if you think about it from a stamp point of view, that's exactly what happens. This is probably not going to be a straight stencil because I don't think my paper is straight. And so we'll keep grabbing this and using it um, throughout the rest of this in order to kind of show you with each technique what you can do with a stencil. It's pretty amazing. Go ahead and finish this little guy off. Okay. So right now, this is what I have on there. So we're going to just go ahead and set that aside. And we'll get back to it. Actually, I might want to just try doing that. No, I can't because once you run it, it, you can't use it again unless you freshen your toner. So never mind. Okay, here we go. Yep, I think that it just may have been the wrong kind of foil again because looky there. See all that pretty green? So it's all ready for you to color. So you can color these sections blue for the background, and your leaves green, and have just a really pretty, pretty, pretty piece when you're done. Okay, so those are the basics. <laughs> and now we're going to get you into the working parts. Um, Hi, everybody. I know you don't have a what's new Wednesday yet. I'll get it done. <laughs> um, this card I made yesterday with our foil, um, and it turned out really pretty. And I stole flowers from Debbie's little flower box because, um, yeah. I was using what I had <laughs> and I didn't want to have to take the time to make them uh, just because this does take a little bit of time for today. So um, too much time for today. So that's my card. Let's see where we end up because we may end up in a totally different place. So pretty. It turns out really pretty, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So... For this, I need one six by six of purple mirror card stock. I need one of my foil pieces that will work. Um, for this one, uh, I had looked at using one of these and then again, I grabbed the wrong foil and I tried to get separate them out, but I obviously did not do a good enough job. Um, so this is from three quarter. 
it has tons and tons and tons of like quotes. This one is inspiration quotes. And it says things like an, on an honest answer is the true sign of friendship. Friends pick us up when we fall down. And if they can't pick you up, they lie down and listen for a while. We are best friends. Always remember that if you fall, I will pick you up after I finish laughing. <laughs> I am really glad that friendship doesn't come with price tags for if it did, I could never afford someone as great as you. So this is all different kinds and you can see this the little hole. Good. This is three quarter, my little hole that I cut one out of. Um, they've got so many different things. Life is a song and love is the lyrics. I hope you live a life you are proud of. If not, I hope you have the strength to start all over again. Um, so each one has a has a theme. This one's called Friends Forever Part One. And this one is called That's Life. Um, so they have at the bottom, I can or I can't. Um, kind of maybe some inspiration to get that person that's maybe stuck in a rut. Um, some little extra boost of care and love and I don't know. Sometimes I need those kinds of quotes, not the kinds that are always sweet and sappy. Sometimes I just need the, come on, get with it. You can do this <laughs> kind of quotes. I like that. um, great pack. We have those in the store, right? Yes, we yeah. do. Um, there aren't very many packs. currently, but we've got another three quarter coming. Well, but that that won't have this reordered in it so they will be back in the store oh, i can guarantee you'll be having some more and um there are i believe one other one of these quote and that, packs. Foiled, okay. and that foiled beautifully oh great um i used the wrong foil on this one oh pretty but they do turn out really pretty um so this this particular tag that i'm using is from the Where's my pack? It's from Studio Light. There it is. It's from Studio Light and it's kind of like the ones that Debbie has done where they're already on cardstock. They are toner um, and they come in, some of them come in white with black so you'll get the gold writing, but some of these will come with white writing in the middle and then you'll get a gold or whatever color foil you put around the outside so that is where that one is that and that studio light and it's just in quotes and it turns out really pretty so we're going to actually use one of those um, for this card so let's get going because it can be fun this one says shine on you crazy diamond uh so first First things first, we have something that we need to heat up. Now, this is a laser toner. This one is coated and it's thinner. This actually came with the mink pack, but you can find frames like this and print them out like we talked about and just pop on down to, uh, I'm going to say staples this time around because not only have they turned out really nice, um, but they also were so easy to work with. And the price wasn't too horrible because I saw the self-copying line. And the price to have them do it was not, um, not scary. Like I said, 10, 10 pieces for two bucks. It's not bad at all. It's 20 cents a copy. And because it's in black and white, that's also why it's a little bit cheaper. So I'm not cutting off my extra correctly. Mm -hmm. That was good. Try doing that again. Good news. You can overlap them. So see, I make mistakes just so that I can teach you. Uh, <laughs> that's why. That's it's all on purpose. <laughs> I think I'm going to make this one thinner. 
Now for the carrier pouches, if you're using a, um, a laminator as opposed to the mink machine, didn't we decide that you can do that with um, It works with the mink paper? too. Yeah, we've already talked about that. Oh, okay. So um, yes, uh, these absolutely, and the mink works with the parchment paper too. I tested it out yesterday because... Just more people are going to have laminators probably yep. than ink machines. And yep. We're not advocating for mink. We just want to tell people that mink is available. And, you know, that... It happens to be the machine, I know. <laughs> okay, so I put my foil in and when I did put the foil in, I just put one over the top of the other. It's not going to add anything to it or make it sticky or make it messy, it will just come right over the top. Make sure that before you put it through, it's where you want it. And you run it on through. So while we do that, I am going to go ahead and put this on. So here's my mirror board. Um, and something that uh, has happened in my machine, so since I'm seeing it and I want to point it out, there's moisture right there. It doesn't hurt anything. It's okay. It really, really is. there. It's just where the steam from it has popped on in there. See? So I'm taking this off. And look at how nice and... Beautiful. And remember, you can use this as your negative if you want to use like a black on a, a black with um, your colors round. So here we go. So here's our piece. That's gorgeous. Now it's hard to see because this is really fine lines, guys. Everything that we've shown you so far in foil has... Um, has been thicker you can really see it um, and this is one of those things that it just gets in there and it goes wherever the picture is so um, what you see is what you will get so isn't that pretty with all of the purple in there that's gorgeous i feel like the camera sort of kind of picks it up when i roll it you can really see it Okay. So I'm going to set this aside since it came through quickly. Um, so this is Letter It Clear Stamps, and we have a whole bunch of them. These are three of them. Um, one is Tis the Season. Um, it's, uh, it's Letter It Clear Stamps by Ranger. And this one is Christmas. This one is an invitation. It says things like uh, party and tis a surprise, um, RSVP, can't read some of this handwriting upside down, time, place, location, for, let's celebrate, you're invited. So lots of neat ones. The Christmas ones are uh, tis the season, fa la 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 for, to, from, love, Christmas, Merry, holiday, wishes, be. And then a little holly at the bottom. And this one is for friendship. Um, you're going to probably find that through the theme of this, uh, for the most part, it's going to have some form of a friendship on it. And I tried to keep it kind of in that line um, just because I feel like 
everybody has gotten to know each other so well. And even though we haven't met in person, I can guarantee that each one of you is one of our friends. So that is my little sweetness to the day. <laughs> Which means I'm in trouble here. <laughs> then I'm done. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, okay. So, and again, these are Re Ranger by Letterit. Um, you will want this type of a bulkier um, print uh, for doing stamping. Um, I have another one and you can see the difference. It's uh, about half the size of print. And sometimes if you get into smaller prints, it does not give you clear defined lines because the, um, because the ink, excuse me, because uh, the ink that you use for stamping is thick. Uh, it, it's toner ink. And so like I said earlier, it's thick for when you use it in a pen. Um, it's thick as well for this, for, for using for stamping. So you'll want a bigger print for the most part. It takes lots of practice to get the other one down. Um, so we'll give it a shot. I will also let you know that it is sticky. So it is going to move your when it goes down on your paper, your paper is going to come back up with the stamp and I'm just going to peel it off. And I want to make sure that everything is lined up exactly up here, because if I don't, then um, I can't, I can't um, match it back up. So it will move. There's nothing you can do about it. It sticks quite nicely. Um, and this is where my ink palette came from earlier. Oh, famous palettes again. Mm -hmm. We use those palettes over and over again. We sure do. And you know, I get a fresh one. <laughs> I'll throw this one away. And then, no, this actually should wash off. I've had, I've been able to wash things off before. Um, so you know they're not losing a lot if they lose their used packaging. No, no. But I <laughs> but I was saying about the toner that it should wash off oh, of pretty okay. much everything. Oh, well, the stamps that they yeah. You can see this right here. You've got a black mark around it where it dried as you were making it. But that pad, you're gonna see how much is in there and how clean that I got that. And it's not gonna come back off once it's dry. And it did not make it stiff on my sponge either. So you can pour some straight on your applicator if you want, um, but I prefer to get a nice thick amount. So I'm just tapping it on there. I'm not trying to get it deep into the sponge. I don't need to do that, um, but I just need to keep it wet and moist long enough to pat it on. Now you're not going to push and shove with this because it is a wet item and you just want to give it the ability to attach. You can always put on a second layer if you feel like you didn't get it the first time. And I do not push on this. I just go ahead and let it sit. I will rub it, but I will not shove on the bottom. Sometimes when I'm doing stamping, I push on the bottom of the piece or I we use the rollers. It will ruin it if you do it with the ink. And look at how pretty and how nice that came out. And I don't even have to do a second one. And it barely pulled because I had enough moisture on my stamp without making it um, too moist and make it blurry. So comes right off. And um, you can come back in and because it is toner, there will be crevices that are in there. And I just take some um, soap and a sponge and just take and move it through those crevices with either a sponge, if I can't get it out, I think I got most of it out actually. Um, if, <laughs> if I can't get it out, then I will go through and I will take a little uh, toothbrush, like a baby toothbrush, the ones that are really soft. Um, 
Debbie has a nail cleaning out brush in there, uh, which I am reminded every time I do one of these things that my hands are crazy, but I promise it's just construction <laughs> at this point. So I'm done with this stamp. I don't need it anymore. Not for today anyways. And it says, you're the best. So remember when I said you can't run it through twice? You can't run it through twice because... <laughs> you can't run it through twice because um, of the toner. But if we do it in layers like this, we can. So I technically could do the stencil um, with the toner pin and then move on to the ink, but I think I'm just gonna save them all so that you can see each one of them. So this one says, you're the best. And I used this really cool looking uh, oil slick. That's what I'm gonna call it. And Murphy's Law says that I have never had it reattach anything once I've put it down and tried running it through a second time, but this would be the day that it would blend over into my purple. So I'm going to trim off the little edge so it's there. Yep, perfect. Put it on inside. Has anybody tried this technique? There is, uh, net. there should be one more of the in there in the store. Sorry, that was probably a question a little bit further back, but <laughs> I can see part of the words, not all of the words. <laughs> it cuts off about oh, a little bit. I can see where it's going, but. Um, and you know, Debbie's quotes, we can run her quotes through, if you guys are interested, we can run Debbie's quotes that you guys get for Bible verses and things and run those through uh, a toner machine and, um, sell them as a toner. So you can put them in gold or in whatever color you want and look at this. Okay. See, this is when it gets exciting. So see there. Now let's see if it will pick it up. I'm going to try. Here we go. So this oil slick just becomes this really pretty. It's got a little, of course, this is going to be the time that it's going to be hard to see there. Um, it's just about the lighting um, on camera. Um, it has, you can see it through. When I roll it, see that? Um, and that's probably the best way I can show it um, on here. But you've got purples, and what you see here is just all in the writing. Um, all these purples and blues and silvers, and it's just so pretty. Okay, so I am ready to make my card because I've done all the pieces for the outside. And I will tell you guys that I'm probably not going to take the time to pretty it up or else you guys will be here forever. So if there's a little bit to cut off of a side, I know that when I grabbed the mirror board, it was not quite a six by six. It was a little shy. So... Trimming is not happening. Mm, maybe I should do it now. Yeah, you should do it now. You can run it through your paper cutter for there. Debbie happens to know how much I hate um, cutting my cards. It's very difficult for me to make a straight line. Um, and I definitely am going to be cutting the card part. Let's see if I can make it fit around the machine.
I swear she's so much stronger than I am. I have to stand up to make it work right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so because this is um, this is thinner paper, you'll definitely want to make sure and this is what I do when I have a little bit flimsier of paper. Um, is rather than just going down two sides with tape flags, I go ahead and I put it all the way down. Now I could glue this to a piece of cardstock and then cut that out to make it thicker because it really is not very thick at all. Um, it's really, it's, you can see, it just bends right up on you even with the tape. So, um, one of the things that I do is lift each one of the sections, make sure that I fold any of my tape back, right? And I make a four piece uh, tape flag instead of just a two for things like this, um, just to make sure that I have it on the way that I want it and that it won't start to curl up because that's what you'll see. Um, is a curl up piece if you don't. If you don't have it well secured. And then I have this little one right here in the middle and I don't even take that much off of it. It's not very much in the middle, but it's good enough for today. Um, and I always put that down first. I find where I want to be. I cannot remember if we'll need that again. Hey, Debbie, can you remind me that that is um, my, the stamp is hanging, the stamp pad is oh. hanging out over there on top of the magnetic. Um, okay. So I'm just going to line it up and then I use that little piece that's in there and then that holds it for me well enough to be able to just shimmy it back and forth to get it straight. I know that it's in the center and now I can push down my corners and then pull them from there. So that is the fancy for flimsy paper flags. And see how nice and flat that is going to be. It just lays perfectly flat. And it won't curl up anywhere because I've gotten them just the way I want them. Okay. And so then last but not least, we have our pretty flowers. But before I put those on... I want to put shine on you crazy diamond in the middle of this because I think it's appropriate. Okay, I am just going to go ahead and use this again. I think that I have enough. Go ahead and put one there. Such a tiny little thing. Okay. 
I did have the parchment paper ready to go for an example of how the parchment works instead of these carriers. And um, I don't know where it went. It's probably somewhere. <laughs> and it's not left. <laughs> I am just going to do a little quick pickup so that I do not lose some of the things that I'm doing on here. All right. Yesterday, they were giving me a very hard time because they never have seen me make such a mess around here. Because I literally went from one mess to the next mess. I, I made a set out of everything that I wanted to use and keep my order. And I went from one to the next to the next. And um, it was a 14 foot table, guys. And she had all of both sides covered. Oh, not both don't sides. Her, just one. <laughs> Minimize. <laughs> Margie's the tidy one of us. I am the just kind of it use was... everything everywhere. But Margie is tidy. And <laughs> it just cracked me up to see her have. The entire tables covered it, out there. It, it was a full, a full two tables that had everything on it, and um, and yes, I, 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 however, had a neat mess. There. <laughs> a neat mess. That's what I'm going to tell you next time you're scolding me. It's a neat mess, Margie, but it's a neat mess, even though my messes are never neat. <laughs> it's a meat mess. What are you talking about? <laughs> Margie worked really, really hard getting this together, guys. I just want you to know that she worked all day and into the night last night getting this all ready to go for you. So it's what she does. It is. Want to make sure that you've that we've got it. And it was a very crazy beginning of the week. They have already been filled in. Uh, okay. I found a quote that I was going to try and uh, and um, and foil because I thought that this might have been my week, but I think that I got the wrong foil, and so now that I've run it through the machine, it won't oh, it won't okay. do it again. So it says, "Dear life, when I said, can my day get any worse? It was rhetorical, not a challenge." <laughs> Uh, okay, I found when I went to go reach back here that I um, missed taking this one off from my dad. This is my dad's with all the gold. And so now this is my mom's. Oh, so, so pretty. this is how the toner pin works. And this is what you got left over. So see, I used my nice one that didn't have a lot of scratches. And I'm going to talk to you now because this is a good time. If you want an antiqued kind of less shiny gold, um, you run it through twice. It won't attach any extra, any extra pieces for you, but it does change the, the feel and the look of the foil. And I'm going to show this to you one more time with something else so that you can really truly see the difference. That happened that happened with your with your foiling plate too, Margie. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Oh. So you know how we had the beautiful design. Yes. And then it and I kind of messed it up by, <laughs> by using other plates over the top of it. And now it doesn't look quite as elegant as it once did. Oh, who are you kidding? This plate is now beautiful. Don't you guys think? I think it's awesome. <laughs> Yep, you write to your friend in the middle of the night and said, you want to know why you don't use your friend's supplies? This is why. 
Ah. <laughs> it made it, it made me laugh so hard. It was wonderful. It was a good laugh. So I appreciated it. I'd pay money to get that back, maybe even. <laughs> Oh, but I did talk her into giving it back to me. <laughs> it took a little bit of work, but I did. Okay, so we're just gluing on some flowers, making it look really pretty. You could decorate it with really anything you want to. There's no right or wrong. Um, The one thing I have to say about about foiling with toner as opposed to foiling with a machine or cold foiling, A, it's not at all fragile. Mm -mm. You know, once it's down, it's down for the count. So it kind of beats um, cold foiling in that respect, being able to do the toner foil. We were talking about, a I've tried second. erasing it. I've yeah. tried rubbing it. I've tried scrubbing at it yeah. and I can't get it off once it's on. The second thing I love about this is there's no such thing as over foiling when you're, when you're foiling with toner, because you have very precise lines where your toner is. That's where your foil is going to go. So I think it has that going for it also and then the third thing and i know margie said all of these things but i just wanted to chime in and just really reinforce that the third beautiful thing about toner foiling is that you can foil photocopies as long as they're made on a laser printer and that just opens up a world of possibilities if you think about all the images you can get online, mm -hmm. all the line drawings you can get on. We ran through a whole bunch of examples. Yeah, there's just yeah. tons yeah. of things that you can do. You have infinite possibilities. Yep, yep, yep. It is true. So, okay. In a way, it's almost like it's kind of the best of all worlds. Yes, you have to have a laminator or a mink, but um, you can pick up a laminator for $30, $35 mm -hmm. and, you know, you have something that will virtually last forever and then you've just got all those possibilities. Yep. yep, <clears throat> yep. Okay, so I told you that we're going to try each of these types and I'm going to give it enough space in between so that you know that we hit in a different space on the stencil. I really want you to be able to see the differences. Because we will I, be getting more toner supplies in too. We again, we haven't talked about toner foiling for a long time, and never to the degree that we are today. And so it wasn't a product that was selling, but now that you've seen what you can do with it, we'll make sure we get more toner ink and some of those kinds of things in for you. Because reality of life, I stock what sells. <laughs> Gotta do it, the harsh reality of business. <laughs> so if you like it then you vote with your dollars yeah. <laughs> and be sure you ask me for what you want to i mean like roberta and the best clue ever if you see something that's either out of stock or you you know come across something you want in most cases i can get stuff fairly quickly for you you just got to ask me about it. I'll tell you whether or not I can get it. Okay. Hey, Bryce, can I talk one of the two of you into just wiping this off? I just don't want it to dry on there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay so here is our next card 
and we're going to talk about a totally different way to applique. Now, I will tell you, I do not have time to do the centerpiece that this has, um, but it's a fun little shaker card. These are the centerpieces that are for um, 3D, um, 3D, the 3D decoupaging for like the too cute and things like that. Um, and so I use these in a different way just to show what you can do with this type of, um, not only this type of um, product, it's, I did it in a different way um, than what we would normally see. Uh, but we're going to do a totally different way of doing, um, doing toner foiling. And some of you may not know that it exists. Some of you may. So this is this is uh, what we what's called peel and stick toner sheets. Now there are some that are peel and stick, like true. Oh here, let me just put my stuff in there. No, I've got it. All right, yeah. Um. So some of them are stickers, some of them are glue-on. So um, if you want a sticker style, uh, the Midas Touch is an adhesive. Um, the toner sheets from Decafoil, um, I do not believe that these are stickers. Um, it felt fairly thin. Um, and so if you don't want to notice an edge, I think your deco foil will go smoother. I think that it will just go right on um, and you won't see like a bump. But in this particular case, I wanted the thicker piece because of what I'm doing with it. So I'm going to show you what I did, but then I'm going to turn around and um, I've cut everything ahead of time because except for this one piece, because I just um, it would take too long Do you and to you don't. Oh, yes, at some point. Um, but I want to at least show you how I did it. So I took our sparkles, our sparkles. It's almost kind of like a contact paper from Hunky Dory. And um, I went through and on the back of it, I took my pencil. This would have been right here in the middle. I took my pencil and I went all the way around um, with my with my little box. So where did I set this card at? There it is. Um, I took my little box and I went all the way around. Nope, 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 nope. I thought about doing that. I didn't. And here's the reason why. Um, the middle of your card comes with this little punch out. And so I went and I set it on here. I used a little, um, I didn't want it to move. So I used a couple of 3D foamies, one in each corner. And I wrote on the back, I went along with my pencil and did it right here. And then of course, this would technically still be in here if I hadn't done it ahead of time. Um, and if you notice, I wrote on it as well. So I marked it for a left and a top when I lifted it off because I wanted to know where I was going to put things. Um, you want it to be able to fit on here. So uh, you need to know which is your top and which is your bottom um, and your left so that you can at least line. That's really the important part to this. Um, so with this, uh, I just want to be able to cut it out. So I folded it in half and it's really great because it's movable, it's bendable. So I folded it in half and cut a good scoop of it out. That's why this isn't as pretty. Um, and so I scooped all of this piece out of it with my scissors, you know, just cut in kind of a generalized area, get as much as you can. And then I just went through and followed the lines on the back of my, my contact paper. And now I have this beautiful little frame. Ta-da! So 
um, this is my paper that I have. And guys, I will tell you, you find black and white uh, cardstock at one of the stores. Um, not everything that you think is toner is going to be toner. I got this thinking that I could foil these. Wouldn't that have been beautiful? But I can't. So um, um, it's just going to be a background for us, but it's so pretty. I thought that it would be a lot of fun. Um, okay, so I know for certain that I have a bird in here. So this is what I have done. This is our D's distinctively die. And again, in order to make this quicker, I tried to make it as easy as possible for us today. But I have all my foils cut into the about shapes that I want. And I have all of these toner pieces. So right now in this moment, all that I care about is where I want to put my bird. So Put the bird on it. I am. There are two birds in this stuff. Let me tell you, it's so much fun. You kept saying bird yesterday and it made me want to put a bird on it. <clears throat> <sighs> okay. Um, so I'm just going to take my biggest die piece and see where do I want him to sit? Because I really want him to sit on a branch. I want him to, ha <laughs> ha, looky there. I probably am just going to cover up this bird because I can. Look at that. And I'm probably going to come right over here as close to the edge as I possibly can. Woohoo! Look at that. It's so pretty. Okay, let's see. Get excited. Can't you tell sometimes? Okay, here's my pencil. So I'm just going to mark so that I know where I want to cut. Yes, I'm using the middle of my paper. Do I care in the moment? No. Quite all right with this. Now, as soon as I cut this, I'm going to go through and I'm going to explain what I did. Very nerve-wracking, setting that aside like that. behind me guys Shh, don't tell okay so I need a little bit more off of there okay so with this I want to definitely make sure that I'm double checking um, I want to make sure that I'm double checking um, that I am going to be putting this in the right place. So I definitely want tape flags for this. And if somebody is kind of worried, well, is this really hard to work with or hard to do? No, it is really easy to cut this. Um, I was so pleased with how it came out but I do want to make sure that I get it exactly where it's supposed to be. So if I recall right, I have to pull it as far this way as I can. So let's see if I'm right to put my bird in center. And I did give myself a little bit of leeway with the size of the glitter. So that will be beneficial too. So look at that. I'm going to move a little bit more. I'm glad I checked it or else I won't have the bird 
where I want him to be. Okay. So now I know this is where I want him to go. So make sure that I've got everything around where I need it because I don't want to be really cockeyed or crooked for the for the frame itself. And I think that that looks pretty good. Lining up the top, right? Okay, yep, he fits just perfect right there. So we're gonna make sure that the tape flags go down. And am I worried about the fact that it's not gonna be right up to the edge of the card? No, I am going to just pull that right down. And move this stuff over. We're going right back there. Okay, so um, I'm not really worried about that part of it because it's going to be covered up. And so if you want it to where it doesn't show a ridge at all, you can totally do what, um, you can totally make it all the way across. I just happened to not cut it quite big enough when I was cutting it down. One side I needed to save, so... We did with what was going to be best. Come on. Now this is the funnest part about contact paper, right? Is getting it off between the two. Anybody have a trick for this? Anybody? It's like paint drying, right? That's always a struggle. Okay, got it. All right, I'm going to pay attention to the fact that this is my top, and so I'm going to make sure that I put it on and use it as the top, or else I could be off. Um, it will matter more if you truly do use the insides of the little. Um, if you choose to go ahead and buy one of the sets of 3D packs to try this out for yourself, um, these little pack thingies that go on with your card. And it comes with both that and the card all built in. So It folded right back up on me. How rude. Okay. Okay, so I've attached it just at the top so that I can keep it nice and, um, for lack of a better word, controlled as I go down. So you flip it over like this, and then it's just like any other time I recall doing this inside my shelves, my kitchen shelves over the years. Um, I do it with signage, so when I make um, signs, that say different things like Merry Christmas, Nana's Kitchen, um, various different things like that. It really does help. And the other one is, is that if you're, is to be able to put it on at a diagonal, if it's possible. In this particular case, I didn't want to pull it diagonally because of the, because of where I wanted to make sure that I had the top. And there is one wrinkle in this, and that's it. So it's easier than, than uh, contact paper is to apply. My wrinkle is right there, and, um, and you don't even see it. It is so forgiving. 
So I've got a little bit of extra over here that I need to clip off. And we had that little bit of extra over there because I was trying to make my bird fit in the space that I wanted him to. And then I also have a little bit of the bottom of the secondary sheet of cardstock. So there we are. Okay, so let's talk about what these really are now. Um, because I cut them in order to help hurry things along, because I knew that it will take me forever to do anything. Um, each one of these, including my Merry Christmas, Each one of these, including my Merry Christmas, are on the, um, I ran through the dye machine with the Midas peel and stick toner sheets. So these right here, um, they are really easy to use. I mean, really easy. And I did say one thing at the end, if we have time, where I've put every technique that I use today together to use the one. Uh, to show you on one card. So you start out with basically plain paper and we go from there. Okay. Okay. So we may not have time and it will have to be one of those fun things that uh, I get to show you later on. Um, so I've run my dies through with the toner sheets for the birds and for my Merry Christmas. And what I'm going to do is, is I am going to run through and I'm going to choose to go through with this with all the different birds at once. So, I mean, with all the different bird parts. So I cut these to approximate size. And how I did that was I cheated. I took my bird that I already had run through and I used it as kind of like an example of what size I was gonna need. I'm gonna move that for a little bit, for example. So you can see, so here we go. Now, this is the one place where you can use any type of foil that you want because it's going and attaching onto the um, it's attaching onto your, it's all black, so it doesn't matter um, which foil you have. Um, with that being said, you want to try and make sure that you cover it all and that it doesn't have any scratches on it or else you'll end up with that black shining through. And I had a little bit of fun with this. I took some of this one that's right here and I took just the pink part out and I thought you know that's kind of fun for putting in for a middle wing so here's my middle so there's three different layers to this wing more than enough and then my little birdie feet These really don't shift a lot while you are doing these. So, so long as you keep it pretty flat as you're putting it in, they're not going to really move too much. There's my little birdie feet right there. So I'm gonna fold it shut. And you saw where it moved because it caught that that um, static, right? So just keep it nice and flat. Mm -hmm. 
and run it on through your machine. And normally you can let it go and it will just roll its way on through. But in this particular case, since I have them spread out throughout the carrier, I'm gonna make sure that I hold it all the way through. So these make really fun dyes. So you can make these into flowers. Um, I was looking at all the different ways that I could use them with different dyes and those um, hot off the press dyes. Uh, I was looking at the, at, the, um, at the butterfly circular one and um, I almost did that one, but I really had liked the cardinal from the other day. I had said, hey, Debbie, what do you think about this one for the adhesive? But it wouldn't have worked for the adhesive as much because it was just too detailed. So, so that's what I decided to do because I really, I really like this die set. Okay, this is my Merry Christmas. And while I'm building the bird, I'm going to let this run through. Um... We have a pokey tool handy. Oh, nope, here it is. Okay. And they're not hard to die cut. I ran them through once. They cut really nicely. Um, because of the sticker, um, you'll want to be careful how you take it out of here. So this is my negative. It was to remind me um, that I really, really want to make sure that when I'm taking these out, um, that I'm not taking the backing off of the sticker. So you may have to do a little bit more work um, at getting them out, but it certainly isn't difficult and it certainly didn't take me tons and tons of time either. So, all right. So here we've got one wing. Look at how pretty he is. There we go. See all the pretty colors. I'm used to my garbage being on my left. <laughs> and then here we've got our bird. And keep in mind foil reflects what it's around. So it's seen my little black glitter, but he is all red, see? There we go. Here's an all red little bird. Here's my little tiny wing on the top. It's almost like this little surprise whenever you choose something that may be a little different, like this orange and pinkish color. It really turned out really pretty. And you'll see how in the bird, it just really gives it a little tiny pop of color. And then I have my little feet. One right there. So I'm going to move those. And this was kind of a yellow and orange. I just, it's an ombre. You can get those. Um, and if you're using them for dyes, your press and go foils will work. Your go press and foil will work. Um, it just will not work for anything that you're trying to keep separate, like paper. So only the toner sheet die cuts. Okay, so now I have my card. Here's what the bird die set looks like, guys, because I didn't have it out for you. I put it away so that I wouldn't lose it. So it comes all in one. You can always take it apart, but man, for toner sheets, it was really nice to have it all as one piece and just run it through. Okay. 
this is the Midas touch that Debbie had used. Um, so it's kind of just white. It's barely, it's barely um, there. You can obviously see through my hand, but it looks mm -hmm. like a white with some pinks and blues in it. And I thought, well, hey, I'm just going to try it because it's the Midas touch that we had open. So um, I put it on the Merry Christmas and I was like, wow, that's beautiful. It turned out so great. So I'm going to take our Merry Christmas. Lay them on in. Do we have any questions? Any, any, any? Okay. So I'm explaining everything well because, man, my brain doesn't think that I have. <laughs> okay, we're just going to let that run through, and while we do, we'll build the bird. Were you saying something? I'm just, I know if I scrolled up, I didn't see anything. Oh, good. That's a positive sign when that happens. There we go. Your drawer is really neat, Debbie, your new drawer, but it tries to run, the foamies try and run away. And you know, you just have to kind of decide what you like when you're doing these. You don't have to go, oh, she had ombre. I, I, I don't have any. That's okay. If you've got red, it will still look beautiful because all the foil on it. And, you know, you're going to be able to say this was, this was my own creation. I always love the art that... I really, truly do believe that this is art. It's not just craft, especially when you start with a blank canvas of paper and you imagine and use the tools to give you such a beautiful piece of work. There's just no way. I, I, I say fooey to the people that say that cards is just crafting. And I used to be one of those people. So, <laughs> um, I used to tell mom, mom, no, I'm not going to get into card crafting, but it would be so much fun. It would be great to have you go with me to the conventions and, oh, nope, I'm not doing it. I was just totally against it. And now look, I work for a craft company. <laughs> well, I knew that it would end up causing me to, uh, want things and so yep that's exactly what it's done <laughs> um okay so this is a piece of the toner that i didn't change anything about it i don't have any black foil so i'm just gonna leave it black um and the reason why you want to keep it black is that little black face around the cardinal and this little on his little breast so that it gives him his true cardinal look. Because if you don't have that black on there, you just wouldn't look right. Now look at how pretty he is. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put him on. If you want, you can, you absolutely could um, go through and, uh, and <clears throat> put him up onto uh, more foamies to, Pull him up even closer to you, if especially if you're going to use the dimension piece, because then you'll have four dimensional sections in there that you've put for depth, and it really does look really neat. Um, and in fact, you can pull up your your um, you can create it to where your wings can go up a little bit higher on one of the thicker types of um, pieces as well. 
This is a perfect example of glue and foil. It will show. Um, you can always rub it off with a baby wipe if you can't get it off really quickly with a finger. But if it dries on, a baby wipe bring, takes it right back off. And again, because it's hot foil, um, you do not have that problem at all. Hey, I like it right over this bird, guys. It's turning out really neat. <laughs> um, uh, with the with the hot foil, you, you can't really ruin it. So you can you can rub it. It won't come off with a baby wipe. I mean, it will. The glue will come off, but the foil will not. I saw somebody say tweezers. Yeah, uh, uh, tweezers would be really great. Um, especially with uh, the contact paper part. I was probably back when I was talking about co contact paper tricks. Um, it would it would be beneficial now, but my hands are just shaking too badly. I don't know that tweezers would work well. Okay. Okay, so here's my little bird. Whoop, look at his little yellow feet. Have to know when I'm hitting. There we go. There's his little yellow feet. Man, that hits the light just right. If I go over here, it doesn't. Can we possibly? It's like a, it's almost like a light thing. Can we pull out maybe a little bit further? There, maybe that will help when we show him. Oh, there we go. I think it's just the way our lights are, especially when we have more of cloudy days recently. We're not getting that bounce off of sun like we were before. And he's really stands out, doesn't he, with the black and white? It just gives you this really neat piece. So while I built the bird and put him on, here comes my Merry Christmas. Like I said, you'll still see the toner through it, and that's okay. Um, it gave it what I wanted it to do, actually. And not glue on to the carrier because the sticker back must have come off. Good news is it's a sticker. I'm just putting him here on the corner. And it gave that black, but it also has that rippling effect. I think the sticker is still on the end. Good night, to Annette. Good night, Annette. Have a great rest of your week. Martha G is loving these cards. Okay, so since that one was sticky, I didn't want to possibly ruin it. But look at how that works. It it lends to a, almost like a gunmetal silver. Um, it's got little tiny bits of purple. Um, but over that toner, I mean, you can see. We, we can see right on it. Um, here on the inside of the card, you can see what it looks like. Those are the colors that are added to that black and it's just amazing what comes out. So don't be afraid of you letting the black work for you, um, with some of your toners, uh, but also be aware that if you are using the dyes, some of these ones that you can see through for foils, you will see the black through it. So just be prepared. And I've got a trick for that if you really want, and that's where we're moving to next. So there's my Merry Christmas.
Pretty, pretty. Yes, very cute. Okay, so this is the quick version. Haha, <laughs> quick version. Um, and this is a little bit of the fancier version, but it truly is doing the same type of thing. Um, the only thing that you have to do with this is use what I found was the best was a little bit of um, best glue ever to attach the, the piece to both the bottom and then attach it to the card from the inside. And then I was able to cover it here. And then I covered it here with just a regular piece of, I covered it here with just a regular piece of cardstock. You can see, you can see how it's loose right there. So no one will ever notice that that's there. So you can just keep using this, especially because it's in your top, right? So you'll never, so those are those. See, nobody's ever going to notice that that's the top. Okie dokie. Make it easy and simple. I mean, hopefully it looks easy and simple. Right? Okay. So my next one is the one that I need the blue piece for, please, Bryce. Your last one? Uh, yeah, while that one's going, I'm just going to talk while that one runs through the machine. Okay, sure. Okay, thank you. Okay. This is how you fix if you don't want black toner. If you do not want, here's my parchment paper. If you do not want black toner, this is what you would do. Okay. So this is called reactive paint and it dries clear. And when I say it dries, it truly does. And then you put your foil over the top of it and you run it through your machine. And this is what this one particular looks like. Now this can be the stencil type, right? The stencil that we were doing. And because of time, I think I'm not going to do it there because you can see it here. Um, I chose to go ahead and put this on some brown cardstock after I saw it this way. This way is really pretty. Um, but I thought, you know, I wanted that woodsy look. So you just take some of your paint and run it across the top. It's a screen that I'm putting down. It's a little sticky, but you can use, um, like I said, you can use that stencil and do the exact same thing. It just happens to be I have this screen. And if you have these screens, this is a perfect outlet for them that you may not have known existed because screens are made for lots of other types of card making. I've noticed it more frequently happening where it's almost like making some of those t-shirts that you used to make with the different colors through screens. And so all I'm doing is I'm running the paste through that screen and I haven't tried letting it dry to see if it fills the screen, but being that this one is specifically made for using with this heat reactive, um, So this is a version of, because I told you that I would show you a version of using the foil on color and without doing it as a die, um, this is the best way that you can do foil on color paper or print it through a toner machine. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. You don't wait for it to dry. And in fact, Bryce is going to have to go rinse this off in the sink for me now. Thank you, Bryce. You didn't know you were getting this part of the job, did you? So as, as I'm going up, I don't know if you can see or not, but that's the paint right there.
it's a little gooey, but it does, it does dry. Um, and what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to just continue to let this one dry because the goal was to show you how it worked. Um, but I already have this one set up to run through my negative of the other log. So I, this was my negative piece and it ran right through. Um, when I ran it through, this is what I got. And so there was all this log foil everywhere else. And I thought, wow, wouldn't that be fun to use as a negative on a piece of colored paper? So we're going to find out because that's what I did. And I let the paint dry. And then I've applied the um, foil down on it. I put it on thicker than... Um, then I would have, I just took and painted across the top of the uh, paper, just with this one, just not through the sten not a stencil and not a screen. Um, and by doing that, it feels like it took a little bit longer for it to be tacky, uh, not tacky so that I can run it. Um, so this is gonna be a perfect example of a way to use a negative and how you can use it on color. Okay, so I am also going to run through um, one of the chipboards. as well. Um, so that we can take a look at that. And that will require either a little bit of toner or a little bit of paint. And under these circumstances, I'm going to just use my toner pen. And color them on up. He's a little butterfly. Um, I think that you guys have all seen these. They're part of the new chipboard pieces that we've been getting in various different ones. Um, so hopefully, there we go. Hopefully it will dry really quickly for me this way. Paint does take a little bit more time to dry. Um, and in fact, it doesn't matter uh, whether you're using it the, the same day or if you've got the toner on there, you should be able to use it at any point in time. Just don't heat it up. So if you know that you're going to be wanting to use a whole bunch of foiling and you know what you want, then you can just do these this part of the prep first um, and do as many as you want in one fell swoop and do it that way. So. Okay, so I'm just taking a couple of different colors just to make it fun. And um, So here's my little butterfly to go with my log. 
and because I know that it doesn't matter whether it does or does not go on other foil, I'll take this, put it in my parchment paper. doing that I'm gonna while that is running through I am going to talk to you really quickly about one other product that we have in the store and I hadn't tried before so it was really interesting to use it and it was a lot of fun actually and it has disappeared so maybe I won't be talking about it Well, we will talk about it, but um, I can't show you the finished effect because it's really cool. Oh, here it is. It's just upside down. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so while this is drying, and I should set that aside to let it dry. These are by, um, these are by Deco Foil. So you can use your deco foil on them. Um, deco foil does tend to be uh, one of the ones that you can use as well for, um, other than the Midas Touch, for uh, your toner sheets. Um, and it does talk about it there. I found that the deco foils worked nicely, um, and I did like them. Um, I just had one open though and it was purple so i didn't use it very much i tested the theory tested it out um, to make sure that they would work but um i did not i did not uh uh actually run in anything other than a couple of tests to make sure that they worked um so this is a toner sheet on acetate so they've already added the toner for you one side is shiny one side is matte and what you'll want to do, and this is the, and that's why I couldn't find the example the first time around. Um, this is the negative of that. And I'm just going to show you how I laid them so that you can get an idea. I turned my sheet to the side because I wanted to have a pattern that was not your usual type of pattern. Um, and I didn't want just straight lines. So that's how I handled it. I put it on at an angle. And so when I cut it, I also cut it at an angle. So you end up with this. Isn't that pretty? Now you've made your own acetate. So anytime that you want to use this with your colors, isn't that pretty? And you just run it, you put it through a carrier. I use parchment on this because of how long it was. Um, and my carriers did, weren't long. Um, so I ran it through twice and it gives it more of a matte look than it would give you on other things. So that's something that's a good point to make. Um, and then you can turn around and look at how beautiful, I'm going to just move this out of the way to show you because I did not actually make this one other than the acetates. I wanted to show you what it would look like. This is on the hunky dory sheets. Um, it's the moonlit moments and look at how much that just pops on that piece. Can you pull out a little bit Bryce? And that way it makes it a little bit easier. It's just beautiful. And then you can go and take and put your toppers on top, right? You can use the little ones because sometimes you don't know what to do with the little ones. So I ran out of time last night because I just did not have it in me to keep going. And, um, and my goal was to fold it, put it down, and then be able to raise it up and have it stick up off. So if I fold it twice on both sides, then I have a then I have a stick down that I can make right here on my paper. See that? Rolled it. 
put it here and then do the same thing up here at the top. Now it's off my paper a little bit and I can see my paper underneath, but I can still see all that beautiful line. And then to put some of these little toppers on top of it, wouldn't that be cute? So that's my thought. It stuck to me. That's what I wanted to do. But again, I ran out of time, um, both this evening and last night. And it's a lot to get through. So I hope that I didn't go too slow, but I also hope I didn't go too fast. <clears throat> this is the paint with the foil sheet over the top. And this is our negative. And probably because of the paint and that I put it on so quickly because I set it over there hoping that it would dry in time. Man, it got that acetate, that, that, um, look it, it just pretty much took everything right off that was left over. And that's what we wanted because it was a negative. If we had a whole bunch of it still sticking, um, it wouldn't have been good because then it would have meant that we would have lost some of it uh, or that, excuse me, that we would have lost some of the print of the log through. So see that? I think I've got the color. I think I've got the angle about right for the light. See how that's left you with the log? You can really see those lines through there. So you can absolutely use this on colored paper and you can absolutely use your negatives and the paint way is the way to go if you're going to use um, a color um, or you're going to use just your toner um, on a colored piece of paper. So those are your two options. So, oh, yes, yes, off. yes. Butterfly. Thank you. So guys, I hope that you had fun in watching all of this craziness that came ahead of you or ahead of me, I should say, because um, I knew that it was going to be a lot to run through. So here you go. There's my chipboard. Can't you just see that now with some wood? And I have a couple of other pieces, so I'll probably just post it to Facebook and stay here long enough to make it and put it on Facebook so you can see what it looks like. And that is all that I have to show you. Um, again, you're always welcome to call one of us and um, Debbie or I should be able to at least point you in the right direction of any of the things that we've done with these foils. I know that it was a long time coming for us to do them, but they do take a lot of prep work. And uh, we just had found that it was just taking time. So thank you for being patient with us in being able to show these. And we were so excited to show them to you. Um, I do know that Debbie has and I believe that she showed these last night. Um, I'm going to run through very quickly. She should be finishing up um, the What's New Wednesday a little bit later on this evening. Uh, it may possibly be into the morning. Um, it's been a really busy couple of days around here. So aren't these just adorable? And there's the little house. They're so cute. And this one in particular with the house, this one was uh, was part of your stamp and die uh, free kit that you get um, with the pack for the class. And this is the charmed set. And look at that one. Now that is an amazing card. You see all of those things? So this is a fun one to learn how to do, guys. This has multiple layers on the front. It's not just paper. And then you, there's little pop-up boxes. And if Halloween's not your thing, because for me... Halloween's not really my thing. It's my husband's. He likes Halloween a lot. Um, but uh, it's not really my thing. But 
even if it's not your thing. These are so cute and so adorable. And you will learn a lot of neat tricks that you can then apply to really any paper pad that you have. So we encourage you to enjoy that this class. And um, this one, mm, I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty positive that this one is Thursdays. Yes. And, Thursday. and Saturday is, do you remember off the top of your head? It is part one of the cards. It's, um, it's the oh, oh, that's right. It's the other, um, it's Half. the other graphics 45 cards that are the yes, Moonlit Tales so for Halloween. Halloween classes. Yep. And they're both graphics 45, but they are two different sets of graphics 45. And they both look so different. Um, same Halloween colors, but the pictures and everything are different. So I um, encourage you to give that a shot. Take a look at both. And so I'm looking forward to videoing this next Thursday and have a great rest of your evening. Good night, guys.